and welcome to the Ronin RS4 gimbal class. Got a Ronin RS4 Pro here. If you're used to the Ronin RS3, there's some minor changes in the RS4 Pro. Let's start with the camera plates. There's little sliders here that let you snug in your camera so that you don't have to put two screws in the bottom to keep it from rotating. Nice. This will dismount and go the other way to mount your camera that way. Little toggle switch here that I don't think the RS3 had that lets you switch the function of the joystick on the fly. There's an improvement in the motors, some Teflon to make adjustments easier, and there's a couple different things in the menu, like you can adjust the torque of the focus motor. And those, are, those, those are some heavy hitting things. So what are we gonna do? I wanna quickly run through balancing this and then using it, some the basic operation, and then also take you through the menu so you understand what you have control over. Now don't be worried, if you're, if you're new to Ronin gimbals, they can handle a heavy cinema camera with a cage, heavy anamorphic lens, battery, all that stuff, okay? I just have one cinema camera, which I'm using right now, so I had to throw this on to do this video. But if you wanna see a lesson, I have another lesson where I'm balancing with the RS3 Pro, and it's very similar, and I have a rigged out Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera with a lens, focus motor, all that stuff on there. So you can check that video out for those details. So let's do this. When you first get it, something that was different with this one is when I put it all together, it wouldn't even power on. You have to hook this battery up to power, USB -C, a USB-C cable, before it will even power on. The charging port's right there. Once it's charged, you can hit that button and see how much battery juice you have. And then once you get it together, I would go ahead and put your camera on and let's get it balanced first before we turn it on and jump into use and jump into the menu, okay? So let me go through a, a really fast balancing and you can check the other video for more granular detail. But there's three axis points on this gimbal. There is a vertical tilt, there's a roll, and a pan. So if I unlock these, and just a side note, whenever you unlock one of these with the camera on, when it's, especially when it's not balanced, you need to hang on to things because it'll fall fast and hard. I'm gonna unlock the tilt. That controls that. Here's the roll, right? And then pan's already unlocked. To balance this, you begin with the tilt. I'm gonna leave the pan unlocked, you, but I wouldn't do that. Hold your camera, point it lens up, and here's what you do. If it's back heavy, like that is, what you do is you want to loosen this and bring it down on this, all right? And so that would be pushing it away from you. Small moves do a lot, okay? So I'm going to hold it, loosen this, and then I would support the camera. It's easier on the gimbal and easier to move and just barely nudge it. See, I'm a, I, I went too far. Because if it's going lens forward, you need to bring it back towards you or up, okay? There, I'm not gonna dial this in perfectly because I don't wanna waste your time, but that's pretty close. The next part of vertical is bringing it forward and now see if it tilts. That one doesn't, but if it did, you would Unlock that and then use this knob to either take it forward or backwards and let it balance out. But you want this in a place where if you position it, it stays. And don't worry, it'll do this with a heavy camera, okay? You're just balancing the center of gravity. So with that done, I'm going to lock it. And next we want to do the roll axes. Again, hold it because it'll go, it'll go on you fast. And now, if it tilts back or forth, you're gonna loosen this in just tiny and tiny movements until you can position it and it stays, all right? Lock that. And next, you wanna balance pan, that's the last. Here's how to do that. And again, mine's already unlocked and kinda of balanced, so if you haven't done that, hold on to it, unlock it, take it parallel to you, and then carefully let it go just to see which way it's gonna go. If it goes left, like if it goes to your left, my left, 
I need to loosen this and bring it back. If it goes to the right, I need to take it forward, okay? And then once it stays, we're good. Now I've got them all unlocked. I'm gonna power this thing on. The power button's over here on the right. A couple notes. The first time you power this on, well actually, you have five times. The so five power-ons before you have to have the Ronin app on your phone and you connect this and activate it, all right? So make sure you've downloaded that app Turn it on, it'll connect via Bluetooth, and it's pretty straightforward, it walks you through it. But it connects, it lets you update the firmware on this from the app. So make sure you have enough battery juice, either all the way charged or plugged in while you're doing that. And then they offer you warranty protection, just different things like that, but then it's all pretty straightforward. Once that's done, we can go through the menu. Now I wanna walk you through the very basic functionality of this gimbal so, so that the other things make sense, okay? and then we'll go through the outside controls and the menu itself. The default is pan follow only. And so what that means is if I do this, it's gonna keep the camera the same angle, right? It's meant to follow my pan, and it knows what I want it to do by how I move the handle. If I move the handle to the left, it's gonna pan to the left, right? Okay, and you can adjust the sensitivity, the speed of all this in the menu. So that's pan follow, so you can even do stuff like this, hold it down to the ground, do a low shot, whatever. Now if I move this to pan tilt follow, then it's gonna follow my pan and my tilting, all right? So let's say I was doing a POV shot, walking up to a banister and looking over. Well, that's what I would do. And you can also, again, adjust the speed. And then there's also FPV mode, which, which is pan, tilt, and roll follow. So you can do some really funky stuff in that mode. And I'll show you that in the menu in a second. So let me put it back to pan follow. And now let's go over the external stuff, then we'll jump into the menu and show you how to use this thing. So here's the gimbal mode switch. PF is pan follow. PTF is pan and tilt follow. And FPV is pan, tilt, and roll follow. Here's the camera control button, and you have to have your camera plugged into the gimbal to use this. But if you hold it down halfway, that's autofocus if your camera supports that. If you press it, it'll start or stop recording. If you press and hold, it'll take a photo. And the M button. If you press the M button once, it'll take a photo if your camera supports that. And if you hold it, it puts the gimbal into sport mode. Sport mode allows you to change the gimbal's response on the fly. You can go in, of course, and do that in the menu. But if you're right in the middle of a shot and say you're on a slow pan mode or whatever, and it's responding slowly because that's how you have it set, but you suddenly need it to be fast, if you hold the M down and turn, look at that, it's snappier, right? And if you hold it down and hit the trigger twice, it stays in sport mode and you can see the icon here. And to get it back out of sport mode, hold M down and hit the trigger twice. And this button on the left is joystick mode control. If it's down, it controls the movement of the gimbal. And if it's up, you can control the zoom on your camera lens if supported. And so here's the trigger. Let's take a look at what it can do. Right now I'm in pan, tilt, follow. So it's gonna follow my tilts, gonna follow my pans, but if I'm right in the middle of a shot, and let's say I'm go I don't want to follow tilt, if I hold this, it locks the gimbal, and it won't follow my movement. It won't follow my panning either, okay? So that's nice to have. Double tapping it, recenters the gimbal, and then hitting it three times, puts it in selfie mode, and you can disable that. Okay, and here's the front dial. By default, it's mapped to the focus motor, but I'll show you in the menu, we can set it to something else. So we've got three USB-C ports on the tilt axis arm. On the RS3, these were all three on the front, but now there's two in the front and one in the back. So the RSS one on the rear is for camera control. So this is what you'd plug your camera in to control your camera from the gimbal. The top one on the front is for your focus motor. And then this third port up here is for video transmission or LiDAR. And there's one more thing I wanna mention before we jump into the on-screen menu, and that's with the power button. If you just hit the power button once, it puts it in the sleep mode. And so it doesn't package it up like when you power it off, but it locks all three access points so you can move it around, won't, the motors won't fight you, etc. And then hit it once again to take it back out. So here's the home screen. To navigate the menu on this gimbal, you swipe different directions on the screen. So if I swipe up or down or left or right, I have different menus. And you can tell how to get back to a previous menu by the gray bar. Grab the gray bar and go the opposite direction to go back. 
And if you see dots on the bottom, that means there's another page of a certain menu that you can swipe over to. And then if you see a little arrow on the top like this, that's what you hit to go back to the previous menu. And so starting on the top left, we've got Auto-Tune, which is calibration, balance status, gimbal follow mode, and gimbal follow speed. Okay, so here's Auto-Tune. There's three different things in here. Number one, we've got tilt, roll, and pan adjustments. This allows you to manually adjust the stiffness, the response of the three different axis points on the gimbal. Handheld and car mount, it's exactly what it sounds like if you're not doing it on a car or something, you just want it in handheld mode. And then start calibration. So even though we've balanced the gimbal on those three axis points, once that's done, we want to come in here and calibrate it before we use it. And that's going to dial everything in so it gives us the best smooth shots it can give us. So just have it on a solid table, flat surface, and hit start calibration. Also, if you want to start a calibration outside of the menu, if you hold the trigger and the M button down, that's going to kick off a calibration. So just don't do that by accident. So balance status gives us a report on how the gimbal is balanced. And so this should be all in the green and gray after you've done a calibration. And you can test it by being in this mode and kind of tipping it forward and seeing what it does. So you just need to lean it forward. And on the display, it's going to give you little green or gray marks. And that means we're good. If you see anything else, something's not calibrated right. So I would calibrate it again. And if it still won't work, I would turn the gimbal off, unlock the axis points, and just see what's out of whack. Something's not right. And just remember, if you balance it all and you calibrate it, but then you do anything, change the lens, add a couple cables, whatever, it's going to throw it off a little bit. And you've got to rebalance it, recalibrate it, etc. Okay, gimbal follow mode. There's only a menu here if you've got it set to FPV mode on the side switch. And once that's done, you have the default FPV, and then 3D roll 60, or custom. And if you tap the little pencil icon in custom, you can enable or disable any three of the axis points, which is really cool. FPV has some cool modes. If I switch to 3D roll 360, then I can do this. And you can do a cool shot like that. Okay, follow speed. This controls how fast the gimbal responds to movement on the handle. Slow, medium, fast, or custom. So for example, right now I have a follow speed to slow in pan mode. Very slow, right? Now I'm going to change it to fast. See? Much faster. Okay, now if you slide down on the home screen, this takes us to the control center. Here we have display, Bluetooth, focus motor endpoints, and system settings. Okay, under display, we've got a timeout setting for the auto lock feature. Again, just the LCD auto lock. We can set the display brightness for when it's locked. And if you hit the orientation toggle, it'll flip the screen upside down. Bluetooth, if your camera supports Bluetooth, you can connect to it. It'll typically ask you for a password to pair. Focus motor endpoints. So when you're using the focus motor, you can come in here and tweak the settings as needed. If you've got a normal cinema lens with endpoints where it goes so far one way and so far the other, then you go to focus motor calibration and the motor will run and figure that out. If you need to set manual endpoints for any reason, you can do that or you can disable them. Manual endpoints would be handy if you were using like a photography lens, not a cinema lens that didn't have hard stops. And so you could just manually set those and then pull focus. Okay, system settings, disable selfie mode. I would have this disabled because you don't want to accidentally hit the trigger three times in the middle of a shoot and have it turn around and face you. Orbit follow mode. So this is supposed to help if you're doing a move where you're orbiting a subject, kind of like that cool shot in the dark night where the Joker was in his penthouse suite and the camera was circling around, that type of shot. Okay, the auto lock mode is a big deal because it lets you tell the gimbal what you wanted to do when you power it off. The RS2 didn't do this. It was introduced with the RS3. And there's different things you can tell it to do. And the default is to fold and lock, but it doesn't completely fold flat. There is a mode here, fully fold and lock, and you need to know something about that. When you balance the gravitational points on your three axes, if the roll arm, in fact, let me power this off really fast to show you. Okay, this is the default, and it keeps the arm at an angle. It doesn't fold all the way in, but there is a setting to allow it to do that. But if you set it to that setting, if your roll arm is down like this based on how you balanced your camera, if you set it to the setting to fully fold and it hits this arm, you're going to damage your gimbal. So you've got to keep that in mind. The default of just fold and lock will avoid that, or you can set it to none. 
and then it won't do anything, or you can just set it to lock the three access points and it'll still stay in its normal position. Push mode is really handy. It lets you manually set the pan or the tilt and the gimbal motors won't fight you. Horizontal calibration. If your camera's leaning to the left or right, even after you calibrate it, you can come in here and do a horizontal calibration and you can also manually tweak it. Gimbal auto check. This is something you can do after you've calibrated if you just wanna run a check to make sure everything is good before you shoot. Restore parameters this is kind of just restoring it to default. Firmware version will show the gimbal's firmware and then some other attached accessories. Device info will can show you some passwords, stuff like that. So I'm gonna go back to the home screen. Now if I swipe up from home, I've got joystick speed, joystick smoothness, dial functions, and dial settings. Joystick speed and joystick smoothness are pretty self-explanatory. Dial functions, this one lets us map the front dial to other functions. So let's say I wanted to change my dial mapping to pan. I could do that, and then I can simply pan like that. And then dial settings let me control the speed, like the sensitivity, and then the direction. I could reverse it if I needed to. Now you see the two dots on the bottom, let's go to page two. So we've got M button, focus motor torque, and press and hold trigger. So the default function of the M button, if you press it, is to take a photo, but you can change it to other things here. Focus motor torque, I don't remember this on the RS3, maybe it was there and I'm just forgetting, but you can set the torque on the focus motor for pulling focus on your cinema lens. And then press and hold trigger. So by default, if you hold the trigger down, it locks the gimbal and it doesn't respond to your movement. But you can also change that mapping to FPV mode. So if you want to go to FPV mode on the fly, this is how you could do that with the trigger. Now if we go to if we slide left from the right edge, we've got the create screen. Time lapse, track, panorama. And if we slide right, we've got the LiDAR video transmission screen. So when you've got a LiDAR video transmission device hooked up to your gimbal along with your focus motor, then you've got Active Track Pro available on the screen, which is super cool. I'm going to do another lesson on that, so look for it soon. Hey, that's it. I hope this has been helpful. I know you're going to love your Ronin gimbal. And listen, if you're an aspiring filmmaker, I have something to share with you. I am a filmmaker as well. I know what it's like to be consumed with the passion to make movies, to chase your dreams, to move to Los Angeles, to do all of that. And I did that. I went to film school, lived in LA for a while. I worked on studio and independent films. And if I could tell you one thing, it's this. Film school, traditional film school, is not the silver bullet into the industry that you might think, okay? You do need to know the craft, but there's a lot more to it than that. When you graduate, regardless of the school you graduate from, your first objective as a, an aspiring director is to begin directing your own films, but you have to fund it. So if you've spent all of your money on school, it can set you back. And that's what happened to a lot of us that graduated from film school in Los Angeles. So my goal with Write and Direct is to take, sure, what I learned in school, but what I've learned since then working on actual movies, and I teach you the craft from development all the way through post-production because I don't want you to be reliant on technical people. If you're reliant on technical people as a director, your career is just stalled. You need to know how to do things so you can keep moving forward. And then I want to teach you the craft for a fraction of the cost of normal school so that you have money left over to buy gear and to start making movies. Check it out, writedirect.co. If I don't see you there, I hope to see you on the channel very soon.